Picture this. You want to make professional level oil paintings. You want those paintings to sell. You want to be taken seriously as an artist, but no one is buying your work. So you do some Googling and you think on it and you realize that, of course, you don't have a website. So naturally no one is buying your art. So you take a look at some website building services, or you ask your tech savvy nephew to build it out for you. And you put everything on hold until this gets done because dang it, you just can't wait any longer to start selling your work. Only somehow it takes six months to build that website. And even once it's finished, it's crickets, no sales. And now it has been months since you've gone into the studio. If you have gotten stuck in the cycle of putting off painting or attempted to fall into this trap, watch this video because by the end, you'll know exactly what to focus on and in what order to sell paintings that you're proud of. And if this is your goal and you've been in this cycle for a while and you're tired of staying stuck, I have an in-depth step-by-step -step masterclass on how to make art that sells linked down in the description. All right, let's kick off by diagnosing the problem. AKA, what the heck are you supposed to do if it's not build a website for your art? Well, step one, I would ask, are you proud of the work that you're making and producing right now? Are you producing that work consistently? Do you have an inventory of work already available that you would be proud to make available for sale? Are you proud to tell people that your work is available for sale? Are you proud to tell them what the price is? Are you 100% confident in that price? Are your prices sustainable? If the answer to any one of these questions is no, please, please, please don't tell me your big project right now is hiring someone else or even yourself for that matter to build your website. I can promise you that right now, this is not the thing that's holding you back. In case you're wondering, this video is not sponsored by Squarespace. So let's say you answered no to any one of the questions about pride. You aren't proud of what you're making. You don't have an inventory that you're proud to put out there. You aren't working consistently. You aren't proud enough of the work to feel confident in your pricing. Okay, we need to fix those issues at the easel and we need to fix those issues first. Think of it this way. If you have a website, but no inventory you would be proud to put on that website and offer up for sale, what is it the collectors would buy exactly? Or if you aren't consistently getting to the studio to paint because nothing that you're making excites you, what happens when your current inventory sells out? The solution is that we need to start from the ground up. We need to identify the kinds of paintings you'd be genuinely passionate about creating. And I talk all about how to do that in the masterclass that's linked in the description if you want more details on how to do this for yourself. Because unless you're an abstract expressionist, you probably need to put together a visual guide for what kind of work you would be proud to be known for. Man, how many times can I say proud in one video? You need to be able to look at your own work and say, no, it needs to be looser or I want to focus on different subjects than that, or I want the colors to be more impressionistic so that you aren't just spinning your wheels every day, painting the same way you always have and wondering why the results remain the same. This is usually why artists get really excited to paint, but when the opportunity rolls around, you hem and haw until the window of opportunity has closed and you have to leave for work or go run errands. Next, we need to be certain that you have the skills necessary to paint the way you want to paint. From being able to visualize what kind of reference you need, all the way to knowing what techniques will successfully translate your reference onto canvas in a way that matches your goal style. And along the way, we need to make sure that we're cultivating joy in your art practice. So you're consistently showing up in the long haul. If you check these three boxes, so you have a clear vision for the work that you would be proud to become known for, you develop the exact skills that you need to paint that way, and you show up over and over again over time to create those pieces, congratulations. You have officially put in the 20% of the effort that gets you 80% of the results. By this point, you may not even need a website because if you show a family friend your new painting fresh off the easel and you mention that it's for sale, she won't be able to wait to take it off your hands. So she goes and she hangs it in her parlor and next time she has company over, one of her friends tells her just how much she loves that painting. And suddenly you have a new potential collector who wants to see what work you have available or whether you are available to create a commissioned painting. You've just made two sales and gained two collectors, no website required. 
Plus, most art collectors want a personal connection with the artist. They don't hop on Google the same way we hop onto Etsy to search for the thing we want. Buying art isn't something that happens through a search engine. It comes from connection, it comes from stories, it comes from really liking the person that you're working with. From here, you're probably freed up to dial in your pricing at this point to make sure that it's actually sustainable. And this is best done through market research. By the way, this is where it's helpful to look at artists' websites, but it's other people's websites, not your own. What you do here is to actually find other artists who are at a comparable place in their career. So another emerging artist with a similar number of awards or shows that they've been into, making similar work at a similar size for a similar market. You find a bunch of artists who check these boxes and you take note of their prices based on the size of their work and you reverse engineer their approximate price per square inch formula. Then you figure out where you would be comfortable within this price per square inch range for your own work. You probably go with like the lower end of your comfort zone, by the way, so you don't have to worry about having to lower your prices in the future because you can always raise prices if you accidentally start a little bit too low. And then you start testing it with sales. The more confidence you get and the faster you run out of inventory, the more this is a signal that you can increase the price of your paintings. Now, the slower your paintings sell, the more likely it is that you should hold your prices steady until that changes. As a note, fine art is not valued based on your time or what would even be a livable wage. I heard Jeff Hine break this down really elegantly at Portrait Society this year. And I'll be honest, I don't remember what he said verbatim, but I will try and capture just the essence of what he said. Just because it takes you three times as long to score as many baskets as your favorite NBA player doesn't mean you should be paid three times as much or even the same amount as that athlete. If it takes you ages to make a quality painting, it's a sign that you need to learn to speed up. I think this is one of the most difficult lessons that I see painters learn when they are new to painting and they love the idea of being a full-time artist and leave their day job to make their newly hatched dream come true. The reality is that developing the skill to make great art takes time and it takes even longer to become quick enough at it that you can really make a healthy living. Now that I'm off that soapbox, what about a website? So let's say you have now checked off every question that I posed to you earlier. You're proud of your work, you have an inventory you love, you are painting consistently, you have researched your prices, they're economically viable, you're proud to tell people your work is for sale and how much it costs to buy that painting, and the sales actually start happening. All right, when you're here, congratulations. You have built up the most important skills to make selling your art a reality. And we know it's true because you've already started selling your work. Now, if you have some free time aside from your studio hours, go build a website. Now that I've walked you through all of this, you might wonder, but Chelsea, how am I going to show people my work? And this is where living in the social media age actually does us a little bit of a favor. I recently had a student who was attending Portrait Society who was trying to decide whether or not he should actually embark on building his website um, so that he could go to Portrait Society and show people his work. And what I told him was, I'm gonna be honest, you're probably not gonna show people your website when you're there. A lot of people wanna see your work, but they'll all just ask to see your Instagram. And so if you are already making art and you have put at least 10 paintings on your Instagram, your job is done. So long as you keep this reasonably updated and you don't have this littered with a whole bunch of personal photos, you really don't have to worry about anything else because apps like this do such a great job of creating a quick portfolio that you can share with somebody at a glance. If you found this video helpful and you would like an in-depth look at how to create a body of work that you would be proud to be known for, make sure to sign up for my masterclass linked in the description below. And until next time, happy painting.